Good morning. Good morning. It is very good to see you, all those of you who are online and those of you who are in the sanctuary. This is a great day that Triangle Grace Church can be together and know with confidence that God is here. We have a few announcements to start with. Uh, last week I invited you to think about going on a journey with me, and we're going to journey from this time to 10 o'clock hour. So we're going to uh, have a service starting next week. I have visuals at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you can see it right here online. I know you can read that. Uh, June the 19th. Uh, so that's next week. All right. So we want to see you here. What time? 10. 10. There you go. A.M. All right. In addition to uh, just the time change, we're going to be doing some things a little bit different in our worship just for the summertime. And so you can expect a few adjustments. I'm going to tell you about that in a little while, though. All right. So you can just be thinking, hmm, what are the adjustments going to be? So that's one announcement. Another announcement, you can see this in your bulletin. Uh, first of all, if you're visiting with us for the first time, we are glad that you're here online or here uh, with us in the sanctuary. Um, we have some new to TGC cards in your pew rack. And so if you're new here, we would love to have you fill those out and you can put them in the plate as you leave. But we are glad that you're here. Summertime. That means Vacation Bible School. So we're glad to have that for the kids. We also have Vacation Bible School for the adults. So you need to note that, that we've got something for um, kids and adults. We're going to have a mini movie night for adults. And this uh, adult VBS is coinciding with the kids VBS June the 20th through the 22nd. June the 20th through the 22nd. And it's from 5.30 in the evening to 7.30 in the evening. So you can um, read more about that in your bulletin. Uh, the offering for VBS this year will go to Welcome House in Raleigh. 
And also, I want you to go ahead and note on June the 26th, June the 26th, we're going to have a church-wide, everybody come on out, we're going to go to Jordan Lake and have some fun. And so that's going to be June the 26th, which is a Sunday between 2 o'clock and 6 p.m. All right, so that's some of the information. There's more on your bulletin that you can uh, read about, but that's the announcements that I have for us, at least that I'm going to give anyway. What a joy it is for us to gather together and to come together and know that God blesses us with his presence and he blesses us to be together. Hear our call to worship. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Son, and Spirit, you are the God of the ages. You created the world and all that we see out of nothing. You called your people Israel. You freed them from slavery. You made them a nation. You remained faithful to them despite their unfaithfulness, and you brought them back from exile. You came to them and to us in the person of your Son, God made flesh. Now you have sent your Spirit to live in and among us, empowering us to be your ministers of reconciliation to the world. Be among us this morning in our worship as you promised you would do wherever we gather in your name. May our praise and prayer bring you glory and honor and draw us closer to you. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. Now please stand as you are able and join in our opening praise, the Revelation song.
mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Let us join together in saying what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed written in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us go now with confidence to his throne of grace, confessing our sins before God and one another, using the prayer of confession written in your bulletin. Lord Jesus, thank you for your presence with us and for loving us always. We confess that we get caught up in our own busyness and in the news of the day, and we do not seek you first. We also confess that we are often shy about our faith and do not share about the hope we have in you with those around us. Hear us, Lord, as we confess our sins to you silently. Hear the good news. God, our Father, knows our weaknesses and offers us mercy and grace in our times of need. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen.
because we have peace with Christ, through Christ, we now share with one another signs of God's peace. Peace of Christ to you all. What a blessing it is for us to be here together, to be online together, to know that we are in the presence of the Almighty God. It is indeed uh, worthy to celebrate. You see in your bulletin we're doing a thing called Life in the Church. And uh, a few weeks ago I got to interview Joe uh, and introduce you to Joe, who's our intern and be with us. And uh, last week we got to celebrate the graduates. Um, and so today we're going to do another Life of the Church segment. And uh, it's a joy for me to be able to tell you that as I invited us that we're going to go on this journey and we're going to all meet next week. At what time? 10 o'clock. There you go. Um, as you know, Letta has gone on a bigger journey. She hasn't just moved a one time zone or something. I don't know how many time zones time zone the Philippines is, but she's doing well in the Philippines, and we look forward to her to, to return um, in the fall. Um, but we're going to um, have some surprising and interesting things um, in the life of our church and how we do worship. So I'm going to invite you next week as we journey to 10 o'clock a.m., bring your glasses with you, okay? Make sure you've got your glasses because this bulletin is going to look a little different for the summer, and that's going to start next week, all right? And so you need to have your glasses on so you can follow along. We'll make sure we guide you. But um, we hope that you would look forward to some changes that we will be making just for the summer. Um, and we hope that these changes help us to, um, to worship God in a new way, in a different way. And we're excited about that. And part of that excitement is that we're going to have Isaiah Perkins, recognize the last name. Um, so Chris's son is going to lead us in worship this summer. So, uh, Isaiah, I'd like to invite you to come forward, and I would like to um, have a, a moment with you, just you and I chatting, so we can get to know you a little bit can more. Can do, can do. Awesome. We are so glad that you're here. Um, so, you just graduated from college, right? This is true. This is Tell true. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, hello, everyone. My name is Isaiah. Um, I just graduated from college. Um, I went to Skidmore, which is up in the Adirondacks, if anyone's been up that way. Um, double majored in religious studies and Spanish. Um, did several things uh, at my time uh, during college, including leading worship for Christian Fellowship. Um, I also played Frisbee a lot, so <laughs> if anyone wants to play Frisbee, let me know. Not in the sanctuary. <laughs> All right, that sounds cool. And um, so you've led a lot of worship before, and Matt's going to be with you and some of the other musicians that, that we know, but now we're going to get to know you, and you're going to put on like a rap show for us, you know, two turntables and a microphone kind of thing. Is that what we're expecting? Definitely one step at a time. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I, I grew up playing um, acoustic guitar, um, started in eighth grade, um, played uh, really worship since then um, in youth group context, um, larger church context, uh, retreats, camps, stuff like that. Um, also played at school. In, in high school, I was part of um, a contemporary band uh, alongside a worship band. And uh, just one funny story from that, um, went to a Christian high school. Um, in that contemporary band, we um, uh, played like a Dave Matthews uh, song for like a spring uh, concert kind of thing. And, and there's this one kid that leaned over to his mom. Um, and my mom overheard this. He said, are they allowed to play like that rock music at school like that? Um, so, you know. So... Don't bring that rock and roll stuff here. We're not used, that might, you know, we're used to, so just, okay, be calm, all right? Can you handle that? All right, we're looking forward to you and Matt and the rest, the, um, the rest that you have in store for us uh, this summer. It's going to be really exciting, so we're looking forward to it. Hey, while I've got you here, tell us a story about your dad. <laughs> he's not listening. He's not listening. We put him in a sound room. Go yeah, ahead. They're in the back. Um, I guess one thing I can share... 
I don't know, maybe some of you know this, but he has a really good Kermit the Frog impression um, <laughs> that you should probably ask him about after the service. Um, yeah, it's a little, a little secret there. I'm envisioning an entire sermon w with Kermit the Frog voice. <laughs> maybe this summer, that would be something to come and see. Very cool. Thank you for the introduction. Let me pray for you yeah, before thanks. you leave. Heavenly Father, thank you. We thank you for Isaiah, for his love of you, for the many, many years, Lord, that you've been ministering through him to different groups. And now that you've brought him here, Lord, to minister to us, we give you thanks. We, Lord, we ask that you anoint him with your spirit, that you would bless him. And Lord, help us to, to be prepared for how you might lead in a new way this coming week and the, over this summer. Help us all to enjoy you and to seek you first. Thank you for Isaiah. Lord, we look forward to getting to know him better. Bless him this summer. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks, man. It is my great joy to welcome the children to come forward for the children's message. Come on forward, please. Good to see you all. Somebody give me a boom. Thank you, thank you. All right, all right, all right. Hoot, uh, ow. <laughs> Good job. It, it's such a joy to see you all here. What a great thing. You know, I've got to bring stuff with me. First of all, I, I had to be a good pastor and I brought my Bible, so that's a good thing, right? Um, so, you know, the Bible, Old Testament, all the way over to the New Testament. It tells us the story that God is with his people, Old Testament and New Testament. And do you know that that promise is be, it goes from the Bible and it's with us today, that God is with us right now today. God is with us tonight. God will be with you tomorrow. And it's interesting because God comes to us in different ways. He's silent sometimes, and he says, you need to be silent, and we can listen and experience God in quiet. Other times, Scripture tells us he has led his people through fire. And he's like, follow this fire, or I'm going to anoint you with fire. And so I thought I'd bring a, a flint and a striker, and I could hit these two together and create fire. Now, everybody's getting a little jittery. I'm not going to do that. Um, but I, this is easier anyway, so just to... Ah, so you can make fire. But God says, you know, there's so many times, Old Testament and New Testament, where God says, I am with you, and I want to make sure you're, you know that I'm with you, so I'm giving you something bright, because God is bright. He's leading us. And so he's, Jesus said he's the light of the world, didn't he? And so anytime it, you feel some darkness... Anytime you're wondering, what's going on? <laughs> God never, he, he's always there. But you can know that God is always with you. And you can say, Lord, it's kind of dark right now. I'm kind of scared or nervous or I don't know what's going on. But you're the light. So help me to follow you today. Help me to follow you tomorrow. Would you repeat after me as we pray together? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, thank you for being the light. Thank you for being the light. Help, me to you. Help me to follow you. Help me to trust you. Help me to know you love me. We give you thanks for our church. In this day. And it's in your name, Jesus. We pray. We pray. Amen. Great to see you all. Guess what? You can follow the Noah's Ark sign. And <laughs> you, you can follow <laughs> the almost Noah's Ark sign or head back to your seats. Good to see you. Thanks. Isn't it a joy that we get to spend life together with all ages? God loves us all and blesses us all. And he gives us the gift to, to share and to pray and to listen. And he says, come to me as you are, and I will hear you, and I will bless you. Let us take him up on his offer. Let us turn to the Lord in prayer now.
Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us just where we are and calling us by name and telling us the truth that in you, Lord, we are forgiven. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much that you came to this earth, you walked on this earth, you showed us that you get it. You know what this place is about. You experienced it firsthand. But Lord, your scripture teaches us that the tomb, the tomb was empty. And that promise of the empty tomb and your ascension and the gift of your Holy Spirit means, Lord, that we are adopted into your family, that those who call on your name are loved by you and are blessed by you and are healed by you. And you invite us to gather, even this day, with confidence, knowing that you call us to approach you boldly because you offer us the throne of grace. Lord, we ask that your spirit would fall on us anew this day, that you would bless us, help us to know with confidence of your great love for us. We ask, Lord, that you'd bless your churches throughout this country and throughout the world as they are gathering today. May they experience a renewal in you. May your Holy Spirit bless us. Bless pastors and missionaries, teachers that are proclaiming your truth. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we can gather specifically here and come as we are and know, Lord, that our concerns and our anxieties, that you hear them. We have loved ones that are going through difficult times, some in the hospital, some might have upcoming treatments. Remind us, Lord, that you are near, that indeed you are caring and compassionate, you are our good shepherd and you are the great physician. We ask your blessing on our family and friends. Help us, Lord, to be assured of your presence and your sovereignty over our lives. So as we gather this day, Lord, may we celebrate you and lift up our voices because of your goodness, your faithfulness. Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
beautiful. Thank you so much. I feel like I'm at a Billy Graham crusade. We just needed you all to come forward. It is a joy to be together and to know that we are in the presence of God. And he invites us to come truly as we are to his throne of grace. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And we will look at verses 14 through 41. Acts 2, 14 through 41. Our sermon is entitled this morning, Voice, Fire, Voice. Voice. Two weeks ago, Pastor Chris taught us that the priest Zechariah, he should have come out of the temple with his hands raised above, kind of like Mr. Spock, blessing everyone around. And yet what happened? Zechariah, he came out of the temple and he was mute. Gabriel took his voice. He was not able to speak a blessing. At the end of the Gospel of Luke, before Jesus ascends to heaven, Jesus does lift up his hands and he does speak a blessing. Jesus says, you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. The voice of God is powerful. Fire. Last week, Joe taught that the priest must keep the fire burning in the altar in the temple. All the time. There shall never be a moment when the fire shall go out. Last week we saw in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, suddenly in the upper room, the disciples were in the upper room. Jesus had ascended. They're in the upper room praying, and there's wind, strong wind. The wind is getting their attention. It's, it's communing, communicating something. And then all of a sudden, fire, fire comes down. And there's something like tongues of fire on their heads. I think that would get my attention. How about you? God is saying to the disciples in the upper room, I am present. And he's saying, I'm still keeping the fires of the temple burning. I've not let the fire go out. He's saying, and now, and now I'm using the fire from the temple. I'm using it to bless you with the Holy Spirit. And I'm touching each of you individually with fire from heaven, from God himself. The Holy Spirit is blessing you. The Holy Spirit is upon you. Jesus is our great high priest. That's what this is communicating. He's still in the temple. He's still our great high priest representing us. Our scripture for today, Acts 2, 14 through 41, voice. The very first thing that happens, they receive the fire, they feel the wind, and they go out of the upper room. And Peter lifts up his voice, scripture tells us, because he's, he knows he's not the same anymore. He's been touched by fire from God. And he lifts up his voice and he preaches the very first sermon about the resurrected Jesus. He knew the Holy Spirit was with him, and he knows that the Holy Spirit is with all who believe. That's true for us today. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. You are from everlasting to everlasting. We celebrate, Lord, that you are always with us. Help us, Lord, not to walk in fear or anxiety because those are there. But, Lord, help us to celebrate your goodness. Help us to know that even today and for tomorrow, because of you, we already have victory. 
Help us, Lord Jesus, to experience your Holy Spirit today in a new way. Anoint us, bless us with fire, with your, your spirit, Lord. Surprise us, Holy Spirit. Bless us, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. We pray with confidence knowing that you are our God and you are with us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. From Acts chapter 2. We'll start from verse 14. This is Peter's sermon on Pentecost. As he has the Holy Spirit, he steps out. He goes down the steps out of the upper room and he says, Peter is with the eleven and he lifted up his voice and he addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you. And give you ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and on female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and in signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and, the, and that great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says, concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, and he is at my right hand that I might not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also was dwell, my flesh also would dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full with gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on the throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did this flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted to his right hand, the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend to the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. For all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God had made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to their heart and they said to Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who received his word were baptized and were added that day about 3,000 souls. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So picture with me. Peter and the rest of the apostles are sitting in the upper room. They just saw Jesus ascend to heaven. They're gathering, still trying to figure things out. They're praying. The wind blows. Fire comes out from above, touching each of them. They're able to speak so that others could hear, and they're proclaiming that he has risen just as he said he would, that he has ascended, that he's still on the throne. And then the very first thing that happens after they're anointed is Peter walks outside. And he says, I see what you're doing out here, people. I, I hear you. You're mocking us. You're coming up with explanations of what you think is going on. You're saying that we're drunk. Is that the truth? Or is that just a speculation, another thing you're wondering about? Maybe you can't handle the truth. Peter says, okay, let's look at just the facts. The youth group this year, we've been studying the book and we watched the movie, uh, The Case for Christ, which is a true story written by Lee Strobel. If you haven't seen this movie or read the book, I know the youth and I would highly recommend it to you. Lee Strobel was an investigative reporter for the Chicago Tribune. He was known for a just-the-facts kind of guy. Lee and his wife, Leslie, were both very strong atheists. They were happy living their lives. And then a life circumstance happened, and Leslie started to wonder about God. And shortly after her wonderings, she became a Christian. Lee said, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I don't want you to be part of this superstitious group. You're changing. You're messing up our family. We were fine as good atheists, but now you're changing. So, Lee said, I'm going to prove to you. I'm going to use the facts, and I'm going to use all the resources of every branch of study to prove that Christianity is wrong. I'm going to invalidate it. Believe me, he was highly motivated to do that because he felt like he was losing his wife. During Strobel's investigation, he was shocked. He was shocked and overwhelmed at how much evidence supported that Jesus is Lord. Although Lee Strobel set out to disprove Christianity, he ended up seeing proof after proof supporting the faith. As you know, Lee ended up, he got to a point literally where he said, I've, I've, I've tried to defeat you, God. I've tried to come up with everything. I give up, you win. He went back to his wife and, and he's like, I've got something to tell you. She said, what? You look different. Something's different about you. And he's like, I don't know, but I think I'm a Christian now. And she said, let's pray. And they prayed. Now Lee Strobel is a pastor, a Christian speaker, and of course he's written some books. All this stuff that... People were trying to comprehend the wind and the fire and the upper room. And people were making excuses and saying, oh, you must be drunk. Oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a something going on here. Peter addresses them. Now, remember, Peter's a fisherman, right? And, and didn't Peter just a few days ago deny Jesus? Oh, I don't know the man. I'm not one of his followers. Three times. And now, 
this Peter, with the Holy Spirit in him, he says, people, let's go to the Bible. He literally, he takes the Old Testament scriptures, their, their Bible, and he says, what does Joel say? Joel was a prophet. Now, Peter is speaking about Joel 800 years before Pentecost. And he's referring them back. And Peter's saying, this is the day that Joel was referring to. This is the day of the Lord. The fire, the voices of Pentecost. Joel was talking about that in Scripture 800 years ago. Joel wrote, God is declaring that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And now Peter's saying, that's happening now. That's what Pentecost is about. He continues in Acts chapter 2, 19 through 20. Peter is saying that Joel's reference is to Good Friday. Joel wrote 800 years earlier, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and, on, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes. Peter is saying, that's just what happened. That's what happened when they crucified my Lord. Didn't the earth shake? Wasn't the curtain torn in two? Wasn't there darkness? Didn't the, the moon turn red because of all the smoke? And that's what just happened during the crucifixion. And what does it say after that? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That the Spirit will be poured out among you. Peter's saying, that's today. That time is now. And if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. God's Holy Spirit is with us. P Peter continues. Listen, he says, hear my words. You know what I'm saying is true. You've seen it. You've seen the signs. You've seen the wonders. He says, Jesus of Nazareth did all these things in front of you. I love how specific he is. Jesus, that Jesus of Nazareth, you know, the one that you said nothing good could come from Nazareth? He's the one. And he did these things in front of you. That's the facts, and you know it's true. You were there. We do have certainty. Remember? Remember when Jesus, there's only five loaves and two fish, and, and Jesus multiplied them and you and my, in fact most of you were handing out baskets of bread and fish to the others who were seating we have certainty remember the boat the 27 foot long boat we were in that boat together and we all were very afraid because of the storm it was power the wind the waves but remember we were more afraid. We had great fear when Jesus woke up and he said, peace, be still. And the waves and the wind listened to his voice. And we shrunk because we saw his power in that moment. More powerful than the wind, more powerful than the waves. We have certainty. Remember that time where Jesus was preaching and they lowered a guy down from the ceiling and, and he, was, he was paralyzed. And Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. But that's invisible, isn't it? How, who can forgive sins but God? And then what did Jesus say next? So that they may believe. Pick up your mat and walk. And he did. You remember? We have certainty. Remember the crucifixion? Jesus told us again and again, didn't he? I will rise on the third day. We saw him on the cross. That morning, 
Mary and Mary, the other ladies, Joanna, they went there and they saw the tomb was empty. And then we ran there. We saw ourselves, the tomb is empty. And then we saw him. Remember, he asked us for fish and he ate fish in front of us. Thomas, you got to touch his hands and saw the, see the scars. We met him on the way to Galilee. We, we grabbed his ankles and worshipped him. He said, meet me in Galilee. And we saw him there. He was there just as he said he would be. We have certainty. And now, fire. We just experienced fire and wind. God is keeping the throne uh, fire lit, and he's anointing us with it. He is sitting on the right hand of the Father. That's what Joel wrote 800 years ago. We have certainty. Peter continues. He goes back to the Old Testament again, and he goes to David. He says in that David said... God will set one of David's own descendants on God's throne. Peter is saying, and Jesus is on the throne, on the right hand of God the Father. This Jesus, God raised him up, and of that all of us are witnesses. We've, we've seen this transformation. We've seen this uplifting. He's exalted on the right hand of God. Believers, be confident that the Holy Spirit is with us. God is with us. That's just not the old days. That's for us today in 2022. In verse 36, Peter continues teaching, We know with certainty that God has made Jesus both Lord and Messiah. The Bible tells us after hearing this message, what happened? They were cut to their heart. They were touched deeply. They were touched within. Only God can touch someone's heart like that. Acts 30, 38 tells us, Peter instructs everyone, what? Respond to God's spirit. Respond with repentance and baptism. You can only experience God's love if you're humble, a humble heart. Repent. Know that you're not God. Confess that to him. Be humble. Confess that you need him. And then be baptized. And you will experience healing and grace from God. See, Peter's teaching that to believe in God, there's got to be action to it. There's got to be movement. There's got to be movement with our hearts. Just earlier in the service, Molly was up here, and, and she did what we do every Sunday. And I'm glad that we do corporate confession, where we, we say, yes, we're not perfect. Yes, Lord, we need you. We know the scripture well. For if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The question is, do we know that's true for us? Or do we think that's for the, the really good Christians? The message is for you and for me that we are forgiven. If we confess our sins, he forgives us of our sins and he cleanses us of all unrighteousness. He makes us clean. I'm glad it's summertime. I enjoy the green leaves and the warm temperatures and being outside. And for me, summertime, I always think of going to high school camp and middle school camp. Middle school camp, we have a very famous day with middle school camp. We call it messy day. It's worse than what you're thinking. They, they spend the whole day trying to get you as messy, the kids messy, everybody's messy as they can. From foot to head, you're covered with yuck and stuff. They do a really good job. It's like they're professional mess makers. Well, in the old days, we'd get all messy and stuff, and they'd just send you back into the dorms. They didn't really hose you off. They do that. They try to take care of things nowadays. But the old days, they'd yeah, going back to your rooms. So, you know, I'm covered. The kids are covered. I'm walking through the boys' room, boys' dorm, and I'm walking around looking and everything. And you know when you're walking through something, everything's fine, but something catches your eye and it didn't look too right, so you kind of back up again? That happened. 
And I was like, dude, what are you doing, man? He's like, Pastor Jeff, I figured it out. If I put on my poncho, my raincoat, with all my messiness, I can sit in that chair and I won't get the chair messy. And if I lay down in my bed and chill, I won't get my sheets messy. I was like, all right. I'll probably say that now. But in those days, I'm like, come on, man, what are you doing? Take off your poncho. Go take a shower. Turn on the water. Let the water hit your body. You have to tell them these things, I'm telling you. <laughs> Get some soap. Yeah, what's soap? But I'm telling if you don't tell them everything. I took a shower, but I was walking around outside the shower. I wonder, can we relate to that story? I'm not talking about the shower part. That's nasty. But can we relate that we, we look at ourselves and we are aware that there's yuck in our lives? There's brokenness. There's, there's something that's not right in me. Do we put on a poncho? Do we put on a rain jacket? Do we try to cover it up and say, I, I'm okay? Don't, no, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, you don't worry about me. I'm okay. Because we, we're supposed to be like that, right? What does the scripture say? Scripture tells us that we are to confess our sins and be baptized, to repent and baptize. And when we do that, we're cleansed. More than just allowing ourselves to cover ourselves with a rain jacket, pretending that everything is okay. Jesus went to the cross. And three days later, he did exactly what he said he would do. He rose again so that he could cleanse us completely. All we have to do is confess, be baptized, and believe that he's done the cleaning. He's done the work. In Acts chapter 2, verse 39, listen. Peter teaches this very important truth. The promise is for you. The promise is for me. No matter how messy you are, the Bible says in verse 39, the promise of the gospel is even for those who are far away. We need to repent and be baptized, and then we need to know with certainty that we have been made completely clean by our Lord and Messiah, Jesus the Christ, and he sits on the throne, he has full power, he is with God, he is God, and he uses his sovereignty to bless us and to cleanse us completely. Barbara Brown Taylor wrote, God is like one of those genius sculptors who can make art out of anything, nothing is too bent. The promise is for you and is for me. We are made clean. We are forgiven through the risen Jesus Christ. In him, you are redeemed. You are made new by our good, good father. You are made new by our good Good Father. Those who have heard the message, who've heard the gospel that Peter preached that day, now they could have responded in multiple ways if we're going to be honest about it. They could have, number one, they could have said, yeah, Peter, we hear you, but what you're saying is not what really happened. Hey, Peter, you're twisting the truth a little bit there, buddy. The, the, the crowd who was present with Peter's teaching, they could have said, we, we hear you, but what you're saying is not true at all. They could have said, Peter, you're crazy, and walked away. The Bible tells us 3,000 welcomed the message. 3,000 responded by asking and wanting to be baptized. 3,000 said, we want to hear more teaching. 3,000 said, we want to break bread with you. 
They were cut to the heart. They were affirming that we are witnesses of what Jesus Christ did for us. The promise of God is real for us. We want to repent. We want to be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. That's true for us today. Jesus is our Lord, our Savior, the Christ, yesterday, today, and even tomorrow, forever. In Him we are washed white as snow. Let us be like Peter and experience this anointing, this blessing, the fire, the wind, the spirit in us. And then let us go out to our community that needs to hear, don't they? Don't we have challenges in our world? Let us raise up our voices knowing that we've been touched by God. May we be confident that the Holy Spirit is in us always. Let us rise up our voices of love and grace, and that grace can be with our neighbors. I want to do something that's a little different for us today. After the service, I'm, I'm being honest, we need to be people who respond and who take action. Let's come to the front and pray. Elders, if you're here, I'm going to ask for you to come forward and pray. Let's pray for our church. Let's pray for our community. Let's pray for an anointing of God's spirit on us. Let's pray for our hopes. Let's pray for our pains. Let's pray for whatever we need to pray for this, this day together. Isn't that what churches sh should do? Let's not wear a poncho. Let's go before God and say, this is who I am. And only you can cleanse me. And I'm going to receive that. I'm going to believe that the gospel, listen, the gospel is for me too. God's voice is powerful. He blesses us with fire and spirit and even his voice to our voice. He sends us out. His voice is to proclaim the truth that in Jesus Christ, our Savior, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for us, please. Heavenly Father, thank you. You are powerful. And you invite us to your throne, not of judgment. We feel that. But you invite us to your throne of grace. Lord, can we confess we're anxious. We're um, worried. We don't understand. And you tell us to come just as we are and receive the truth of your message that we are forgiven in you, that we're made clean in you, and only you're the one who can do it because you sit on the right hand of God. We thank you for your great love for us. We pray in your name, Jesus, that is above every name. Amen. I invite you, let us continue to worship. If you're able, please stand. Let us sing, crown him with many crowns.
we have really good news. The truth of the gospel is for you. The promise of the gospel is for you. He says, take off your rain jacket, take off your poncho, and let me cleanse you. Because I am safe, I am good, I know you by name, and I want to bless you, I want to anoint you, and then I want to send you out because your neighbors need to hear the good news also. Aren't our neighbors trying to hide? And yet we have the word of life that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. So go this day with confidence. Lift up your voice. Lift up your breath and share the gospel with those that need to know. God is behind you. He's beside you and he goes before you. And for real, he hears your prayers. Please come forward and pray with an elder. Thanks be to God for the church and for his faithfulness. Amen. Amen.